Greetings, Marsh here, and welcome to episode one of my Industrial Revolution 3 playthrough. In this episode, we are going to get started making some basic materials, as well as discuss some of the game systems. Enjoy. And we have appeared on the map. However, there's lots of uh, noise because we're standing on this panel, but if you walk off of it, it will quickly explode. So, no more beeping. And if we bring this up, we can see that milestones got set, and also it's telling us to hit I to access the manifesto, or use a quick bar shortcut. So we'll get into that in a second. But first, there are a few things that we do have to set every time we start something new. Definitely want to disable the rocket target, because we don't need that. Let's change the Evo GUI settings. Don't want it to round. Evolution factor, show the decimals. Time played, don't show days, and show the nearby pollution level. So, that should be all set. I like to start from nothing with my playthroughs. Now in your inventory, you don't start with anything. By default, IR3 does give you some free items. There are some treasure chests with some items in here. And also, if you carefully look, there will be three of these junk piles scattered around this platform somewhere. Because we appeared right next to trees, some of them are kind of hidden. Also, you can see them on the map if you're really careful. So the third one is to the right here. And yeah, there it is. <laughs> so if you can't find out where they are, you can look at the map to find the three that always appear with you. Wow, all those items are so close to each other. I hate it when that happens, but uh, we're living dangerously here. You can press I to bring up the manifesto. It also is the hotkey for hell mod, which is a little annoying, but also you can uh, use the button on the toolbar here to bring it up. And you can read through it to learn about everything that comes with IR3. And I'm not going to read it to you because you can read it just fine, as well as I will be covering all of this stuff through playing the game. But I will click through these. So if you want to pause the video and read them, you are more than free to do that. I think I skipped furnaces there. It's very useful information. Unfortunately, it kind of overloads you on information right at the beginning of the game here. But it's all very relevant, and if you have read through all of this stuff, you're probably like, oh wow, that's a lot of cool stuff. <laughs> and I agree, it is a lot of cool stuff. So to begin with, as with any playthrough, our first goal is researching something. And to do that is going to require research packs, and in IR3, the research packs are themed based on the material that goes into it. So the first research pack, or the red packs, and it's cool that they're completely different, they're like chess, is a copper pack. So if we go over here, we can see that it requires copper plates and tin gears. So one interesting thing about IR3 is no iron at all. And in fact, iron is a mid-game product. So we are going to be dealing in copper for a very long time here. It definitely extends the early game. So right now we're in the Stone Age, and I think we would get out of the Stone Age if we built a mining drill. So we don't have to mine by hand, and of course I'm going to, because I like to start with nothing. And you actually have two choices on the drills that you can make, and you have to look at this icon to show you that if you see these heat waves, then that means it is a burner drill. And if you see the steam, then it's a steam drill. So you start out with either a burner drill or a steam drill for mining. And it's up to you on which one you want to use. The steam drill is slightly more expensive. However, if you look at the pollution, they are essentially the same. However, the energy consumption of the burner drill is three times as high. That might make you think the steam drill is better, even though we're not using hell mod for much. Let's use hell mod, because this is a situation where it comes in handy. So first we want to disable all that stuff because we don't need to see it. Let's say our goal is... How about just mining copper out of the ground? So we'll do that and say our output is... 10 copper and it's going to be burning on coal so we'll click that to add it in here and for some reason something's kind of broken about this version of hell mod where it doesn't quite link correctly so we're just going to deal with that and hopefully it gets fixed later and the way you deal with it here is just keep doing it over and over instead of using the matrix solver which for whatever reason doesn't work but what we're doing here is we're determining that to get that 10 copper ore we're going to make 2.36 pollution and because of the way we did it, it doesn't add all the numbers together, but we can add it in with the 1.51, and then we have to add all of that extra coal to say that 
doing this would require 1.79 coal a second. So since we're experimenting, let's do another line. We want 10 of them again. But this time, instead of using the burner drill, we're going to use the steam drill, which requires its input of steam, which then has to come from a boiler, which will require coal. And to make that coal requires another drill here. Let's make it a steam drill. And unfortunately, this is another matrix thing, but it looks like the matrix solver actually fixed it this time. So shrug, I don't know why it didn't work with this side, but that gives us the alternate numbers. As far as pollution, it actually makes less pollution to run it on only coal. However, it requires this 1.79 coal a second. If we did it with steam, it would make slightly more pollution, but it would require much less coal. So which one you decide to do is up to you. And requiring less coal comes down to just the fact that the energy requirement is less. But which one you use is kind of up to you. Steam, although it's not a fuel source, it is kind of annoying to deliver. So I would say whether or not you use burners or steam comes down to simply the logistics and how easy it would be. So if you're using, let's say, burner inserters that need the fuel anyway, then using a burner miner makes a lot of sense. So in this situation, since we don't currently have the infrastructure to run steam to it, it seems like it would make a lot of sense to just make a burner drill. So <laughs> after we've covered that, now you're looking at those resources and you're like, wow, that's a lot that goes into a burner drill. Does it really require 91.5 copper ingots? And the answer is yes, it does. That there are a lot of parts that go into high R3 buildings. It's probably not worth covering all those items right now, but we'll just trust Factorio in the sense where we need some wood, we need 92 copper ingots and 24 tin ingots. And if we come over here to processing, we have two different processing recipes, one that uses scrap and one that uses regular ore. And right now we wanna do regular ore and this is a vanilla-like expansion, so nothing crazy about this. You put one copper ore in and you get a copper ingot back. However, the thing that is different is that instead of plates being your origination item and all items in the game coming from those plates, now, the origination item is ingots and everything in the game comes from ingots, including plates. <laughs> so it's an extra step in there. So we need to acquire a whole bunch of ore. Let's start with copper since we need more of it. And, oh, that's so annoying that all these are right next to each other. And we don't get splitters to start with, so yay. Are there any other patches around here? <laughs> well, there's a tin down there. <sighs> well, this is what happens when you live dangerously. You work with what you're given. Let's use yarn to add in the copper patch and then put it there so it stays up there all the time that we have 167,000 copper. Might as well add the rest of these as well. 64K of stone, 119K of coal, and 80K of tin. Also, you start with a steam fisher and a steam fisher is essentially free steam, so after looking at that, you might be like, well, we super duper want to do a steam mining drill then. And yeah, more or less. However, it's going to require us to assemble a bunch of pipes and things. Plus, this really isn't that much steam in the long run. It is an unlimited form of steam, but it doesn't produce the same amount of steam consistently. So I prefer to start with burners and then add the steam in when we actually need the steam for something. Although I am mining copper here by hand, I'm thinking that uh, actually we probably should pick up a little bit of wood here. Oh, <laughs> it's even more annoying that there's a cliff right here <laughs> and a little bit of water. So <laughs> oh, I'm already not liking the seed. We'll make it work, but we need to acquire a little bit of wood because it's not that far away from the sun going down. And in the beginning, since we're doing stuff by hand, I like to put this stuff on the toolbar just so we know exactly how much we have. And let's mine some of these rocks because we're going to get coal as a result of doing it. And we can add all of this stuff onto our list here. We'll worry about sorting it later. Because of the torches mod, this lets us make a torch. And it makes instantly. It's kind of weird how there's no crafting time. And also, it's a weird mod where you see like the efficiency is a weird number and I don't know. It's a weird thing. Get rid of the torches once you don't need them anymore. Put it that way. <laughs> Only use them if you actually need them. So let's have a torch ready because the sun is probably gonna start setting before we have mined our 92 pieces of copper ore. The other buildings in IR3 don't scale in this level of complexity. So they are 
complex compared to vanilla buildings, but they don't just become like thousands of ore per building. It's just that the floor of the minimum amount of materials that go into a building is pretty high because of all of the intermediate products that you need to make that go into them. I'm sure it is not their intent that you start with nothing like this, but I'm a glutton for punishment and I love starting from nothing <laughs> and beating on rocks with a stick. All right, the sun is starting its very gradual setting and the character has turned on their own personal light source. But let's finish this mining first. And 92. So it is definitely dark enough to where this will help a little bit and um, who knows where we're going to start putting belts in, but we can put that there for now and it does add some light. It's not as good as a regular lamp, but it does help. So we should probably build a few of those. Well, of course, to smelt things, we're going to need a stone furnace, which is stone bricks and wooden beams. But those are things that we can handcraft. You don't have to cook the bricks. And you can see even the stone furnace has a crafting time of 24 seconds. So maybe I should have done that sooner. We could probably start plopping these torches in kind of all over the place. Because we're going to want them. They do kind of... Um, glitch out a little bit when they disappear from the screen. You see that the halo, like, stops illuminating before uh, that part of the screen is scrolled down. So they are a kind of weird. They're, they're a glitchy mod for sure, <laughs> but they do their job. All right, let's turn this on for our placeables. Shows that we have something we can build with, but also I'm just gonna throw it in the menu because why not? And there we go. Pretty much everything in our three has its own graphics. So that is the stone furnace and it is a three by three item. So we throw the copper in, we throw the coal in, and there it goes. And we created our copper ingot. It only took 18 minutes. Kind of need more coal, but a lot of these rocks do not have coal in them. All right, now we need our 24 pieces of tin ore. And before I forget, we also do need another stone furnace. We could reuse that other one, but we might as well make a new one. And you're definitely going to use a lot of trees in IR3. You can automate it, so don't worry about that too much. But nonetheless, get used to cutting down trees for a while. Okay, there's our 24 pieces. And it is a little dark here, so let's just add more torches. That's what you do. And we'll put it about right there for now. And um, let's look at the even distribution settings. Here you can set exactly how it functions when you put items in things. Evenly distribute items makes sense, but also you can use this fuel limit and ammo limit to decide the maximum amount of resources that will be inserted into a machine if you use it for that purpose. How about we limit it to 20 items of coal and 10 items of ammo magazines. So now, if we use even distribution for this, it will only put 20 in there. And there we go. Now we're making our tin. It takes a long time to make those initial resources that we need. <laughs> Almost there, though. And I guess at this point, we can kind of start sorting out this menu a little bit. But another thing we can do is just start mining more tin because we're not going to stop at one drill so we might as well uh, get another 24. Fortunately we kind of need to just start mining coal. I was hoping there would be enough rocks in this vicinity that we didn't need to do that. These torches will run out of fuel eventually. You can put more fuel in however if you pick the torch up after you've placed it you'll get the wood back but you won't get the coal back. It's up to you if you want to leave it or not. But there's our tin ingots. Let's uh, get another set started. And we're at the darkest point of night now, so it's actually night. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry that we're leaving our torches for a while. But I desperately want coal without having to mine it out of the patch. Don't want to wander too far down here, because the biters aren't that far away from us. These burner drills at 750 kilowatts are actually quite energy hungry, so they go through coal really quick. So you definitely don't want to be hand inserting for any longer than you have to. So there we go. Guess we'll uh, fill it up with coal again. So it used almost all of that 20 for that. But there we go. We've got everything we need. We don't need those settings there. To make our first burner mining drill. 
But then we click on this and you're like, oh God. <laughs> you needed all of that to make one drill? Yes. Unfortunately, yes. And it looks like we also finished up with those tin ingots. Well, while it's going, I guess we'll just get more copper. Having this long crafting queue probably makes IR3 look more complicated than it is. It is certainly showcasing probably the biggest departure from vanilla, and that is there's an incredible amount of intermediate products now that go into making anything. However, despite all of those items, notice how it's essentially all copper because this 24 right here, that's just the 24 ingots that we needed turning into 24 plates. Everything else there is just copper or maybe a wood item. So it looks like it's quite complicated, but it's essentially just a bunch of copper products. So it's actually not as bad as it looks. I would say this is IR3's way of nudging you away from handcrafting because it's just obnoxious. <laughs> but don't worry, it gives you the tools to make that a lot quicker. And in fact, it's not going to be that far into our playthrough before we have simplified our crafting queue greatly. I probably will fill up those torches after we get a large supply of coal. Having burner lights, although convenient that you have them at the beginning of the game, they end up sucking up a lot of coal, simply because you don't know how long they're gonna have to sit there, even though they don't use that much power, that if you look at them now, they've already used a chunk of it, so we'll have to deal with that. But coal is easy to mine, so it won't take very long before we have a whole bunch of it. Okay, we finally have our drill. First thing you'll notice is the drills are huge, but that's fine. And also, this is a good opportunity to show the picker dollies and how they work in practice. It's actually really cool. So when you're doing complex builds, you can just place machines. And in fact, even machines that are on can be moved. And here's why I changed the hotkeys for this. So let's say I wanted to move each one of these down like this or up like this. Right now I'm holding shift and using WASD to do this. So it's actually very fast because I don't have to take my hand off the mouse. So if I use the default settings, I have to move it here, hand off mouse, down, hand on mouse, hand off mouse, down. So you see how like it's so slow and annoying compared to <laughs> doing this. So with this mod specifically, picker dollies are really useful because you tend to build very dense, complicated builds. So being able to do this is just really nice and it won't let you like kind of cheat there. So everything is together and I'm actually just going to fill that up all the way because you see how fast it goes through coal here. So I actually want to put more than just 20 in there, but we now have at least at the very base level automated copper ingots. You can see though that this machine is much faster than the stone furnace. So that is something we'll have to deal with. So now we need to build a second one. And what resources are we short on? Coal to an extent, we're getting tons and tons of stone because we're breaking stone apart for these free coal bits. I'm also just breaking the other rocks too. Don't have to, but since we're already here clearing out rocks, we might as well. So it won't take too long while that is going, but we are waiting for the furnace to do its thing. One thing we can use this opportunity for, and you also see we are left with a copper rod because this required 91.5, specifically because making copper rods, we get two of them per ingot. So clearly we only needed one for the recipe and now we're left with one. However, we are eventually going to need to have more output than this. So let's calculate and see what we would need to max out this drill. And you can see it's totally uh, maxed out already. And there's a couple of ways you can do this. First, I'll show you the hell mod way, but that is not the way we're going to use for most of this playthrough. So if we set it to compute by element and we try to use the link, it for some reason just does not link up here. It really should. So something is wrong with this uh, most recent version of Helmod. So unfortunately, we're going to have to type this in by hand, which is totally not the point of <laughs> this mod. And it's also not showing us the ingredients of coal here either, which it really should. So something is wrong with Helmod. Either that or they changed it so much to where it doesn't work like I would expect anymore. Because you see it requires an input of coal here, but then we back out and then it doesn't. <laughs> so <laughs> who knows? But anyway, we were doing all that to find out that it is a one to four ratio where we have one burner drill and four stone furnaces. We would have a balanced setup and it looks like we finally have enough to make another drill. So we might as well get that started and wait the three minutes it'll take. 
But we could also use rate calculator for this. So if you select a machine, it'll just tell you what the input ingredients and the output is. However, you can select both of these together to get an idea of what the throughput is. So you see that we selected both and we have an excess of copper, which means we need more stone furnaces. Switch this to Q to front because we need to have three more stone furnaces and then put it back. So we get these done first, even though they take a little while. I kind of want to show kind of the power of rate calculator when it comes to IR3 here. Although it actually, because it places recipes automatic based on putting items in, we're actually going to have to place this by hand here and get that one started. And then now we select everything and you can see that the numbers are going down and that very clearly if we had four of these it would be balanced. Since we're here, we might as well. Because we do that. Now we select everything and you see we still have a excess, but we're getting close. So now we have all four of these going. And now we have a balanced setup where there are no excess intermediates. So that was a little grindy considering how we were doing with the stone furnaces, but you can kind of see how the more complicated your setup is, the faster you can select things with rate calculator and not bother using Helmod, especially if Helmod's having these weird bugs. But anyway, now suddenly we have way more copper than we'll ever need, specifically because of how slow the handcrafting is. We certainly could use the copper, it's just the handcrafting is very slow. Well, we're waiting for the drill to mine tin, but we also wanna have a drill for mining the coal. So we don't have to go running around finding coal rocks to break apart. We now know the ratio. It is the same for tin, but we need a lot less of it, so we probably can get away with just having a one-to-one -one ratio for the miner for now. So there we go. Making our tin. And uh, kind of running out of trees a little bit here. This is going to be a constant thing. That's another problem you can run into if your map is very cold and dry. You could actually just have difficulty finding trees even forgetting about the rubber trees. Well, let's pick the rest of these up for now, so that way we can consolidate the fuel in there. All right, we definitely want to place this with an eye of not overlapping on the coal for now, because we couldn't do anything about that if we did. So let's put that there, move it over, and very short on coal, so that's not going to last very long. And we actually have quite a bit of copper ingots, enough to basically make another mining drill if we had the tin, which we now do. So we are slowly increasing our output here. Well, since we are waiting for that, let's go exploring. And the game, of course, supplied us with a shotgun, but let's craft one anyway. So Alt-Q to put this in the front where we have one of those. And the copper cartridge is tin and copper pellets. Probably going to want a few more than that. There we go. And the armor would be nice too. <laughs> this probably took longer than uh, just making the drill itself. But we are going into biter land and there are some biters out there, so that would be unfortunate if we had to fight them without a weapon. There we go. Now we can make our armor too. And let's go for a walk, see if we can find some rubber trees. They do have a specific look to them, so once you know what they look like, you can find them. And you can also use the deconstruction planner to try to find them too by just hovering over these until you find a rubber tree and I guess we'll just use this to point them out. Once you know what rubber looks like you'll be able to find them pretty quick. There they are, down there. It's kind of a long walk but we're already out here so I guess we're going. Anyway we have our shotgun, let's put the ammo in there so we're ready to go. I would like to cover some combat items but I don't think we should be fighting biters right now and making them angry. So let's hold off on that. The rubber trees look like this and they tend to be on coastlines. Not necessarily, they can be in fields and things, but they're usually on coastlines. And rubber wood is its special type of wood. It has less megajoules and more pollution, but you need some of it to get started, so... It's not that important that we collect some right now, but... Since we were just waiting on the handcrafting for this mining drill anyway, we might as well grab some, just so it's not something we have to find later. 
Looking good. Man, I was thinking we almost certainly would get back before this handcrafting was done, but it's so slow. Of course, you could use the quality of life research mod to make your handcrafting faster, but I feel like that's kind of cheating. I mean, again, it's your own game, so do whatever you want, but like the whole point of the mod is that handcrafting is very tedious and it's something you should automate. And that is a very factorio problem to have. So I feel like it is uh, quite expected that this is an issue that you would need to solve. Out of coal, but not for much longer. And we might as well make a storage chest for this. And it's interesting, you have a couple of options. That IR3 gives you these wooden and tin pallets with a storage size of one <laughs> and a storage size of three. And you might be like, why would I want a chest with a storage size of one? Well, if you only want to make one stack of items, that saves you from forgetting to limit a bigger chest to one item. Also, you can drive over the pallets with a car, whereas you cannot do that with a crate. So it's really cool that they have these one slot chests in here. And the first chest we have unlocked to have a storage size of 10 and we can either do it with wood or with tin. However, wood is probably the rarer resource in this situation. So doing it with tin makes more sense, even though the crafting time for making it with tin is uh, more than twice as long. Ultimately, wood is just the rarer resource, but technically it's the cheaper crate if that's what you want to make. So we need to place this here, but we don't want to deal with stone. I guess it's not that big a deal if the thing was picking up stone as well, but it's just not being completely efficient with the mining time. Well, if we put it right here, it would kind of work. So <laughs> this is going to be an ongoing and annoying problem until we have splitters. So we'll plop it in there, give it the tin chest and a little bit of fuel to get started. That's the end of this episode. On the next one, we are going to start some research, as well as set up some of the new logistics features of IR3. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.